it's always worth knowing what might have hatched, might be hatching uh, today, uh, we, what may well hatch the next week. Um, and one way you can do this is to get a little bit of a net. You can make your own out of a bit of ladies' tights material on a bit of wire. This is a potch one. And you simply just go through the riverside vegetation. So what I'm doing is seeing what is about, what lambred insects there are, what waterbred insects there are uh, in the vegetation that might finish off or appear on the river. Well, as soon as we look in the net, having beaten through the vegetation with it, uh, we can see a whole variety of beasts just without opening up. I mean, I, I can see a little yellow sally there. Uh, there are some very small two-wing flies. Um, there looks to be the odd medium olive in there. So what we're going to do now is to have a look very, very closely uh, at what we have found in our net, because this will give us an indication of what's hatched from the river recently, what might be hatching today, um, what might fall in the land-bred insect point of view, uh, from the vegetation around the river. Right, let's go into that and see what we can find. Now, what I do, tend to do is just go slowly. A lot of these things will fly out if you give them half the chance. We want to have a look at them before they do fly away. So slowly, there's one, there's, now here we are, here's the yellow sally. Now, there are two species of yellow sally stonefly. They're the yellow stoneflies that we have around. This is the less yellow sally that occurs in upland streams, like the headwaters of the Loon, where we are now. The other one, the ordinary yellow sally, is a bit larger and a bit, little bit more yellow. But there it is. And watch it run away on my fingers. There it goes. There's a pale water spinner, two tails. Very, very, very abundant fly in the back end from June onwards, late June onwards. Uh, notice the orange tinge at the end of the abdomen, the rest of the abdomen being white. Now look at the, compare that. Now a lot of the books will tell you that that should be tied on a size 16 hook. That one is about a size 18 or 20. Most people tie their imitative patterns far too big. The first real trout and trout fly of the year is the large dark olive by Itis Rodani. This is the dung that's just hatched, I just caught it. It's one which it just emerged from the nymph and uh, is on its way, was on its way to the vegetation to molt into the spinner. Now this hatches uh, from February, late January, February, if the weather's mild, right through into April and provides us with our first great hatches. It hatches at the end of the grayling season, start of the trout season. Notice it's got two tails. These are quite short in the dun and it's got these upright wings and is an olive, drab olive colour. Now that is the fly that we would uh, imitate with something like uh, Kites Imperial. And so there, the large dark olive of spring. One other interesting point about this is that there's a second hatch of this in September, October and early November. So if you're out at the end of the trout season, beginning of the grailing, back end grailing season, this is another insect, you, the same insect you can imitate with dry fly. The hatch usually starts about lunchtime, 12, 1 o'clock, and we'll go on through the afternoon. If you don't want to fish dry fly, then you could fish um, a spider wet fly. The, the best one is water hem blower to imitate this particular insect. Now you look at the two long tails. Compare those long tails with the dun, which I showed you earlier. Uh, the body is a sort of uh, orangey colour. It, it can be quite redder than that. Notice the transparent wings. In the dun, the wings were quite dull. And I can tell this is a male because the eyes, if you look at the eyes, they're on top of the head like a turban. They're known as turbinate eyes. And this is typical, excuse me, this is typical of the Baetis olives, having in the males eyes on top of the head. There are also, I don't know if you can see them, two, at the base of the tail, two tiny little extensions to the abdomen called claspers, which are used when the male is mating with the female. He, he clasps her with those. So there is the... Um, is the spinner of the large dark olive. Now, I don't imitate this. Uh, there are lots of good imitations of the, of the female, such as Lund's particular. But the reason I don't is that the female of this, when it goes back to the water to lay, lay its eggs, doesn't go onto the surface as, for example, the mayfly spinner, if you look at the mayfly programme. What the female of this species does is to crawl underwater and lay her eggs on boulders and bits of rock and so on. So. It's an underwater species and can't be matched properly with a dry fly. You could use a red spinner. In my youth, I used to use a red-bodied spinner to imitate it uh, wet under the surface. So there we go. That's the spinner, male spinner, 
of the large dark olive Baetis rodani, a most beautiful beast. Look at those lovely long white tails. One of the characteristic upwind flies of Pennine Reservoirs is the sepia dun. It's unusual because most of the olives and duns have two tails. This one's got three tails. And if you look from the side, it's got two pairs of wings and both pairs are the same colour. Now, in Ireland, we'll be seeing the claret dun, which has a pale rear wing. That's the dun with very, very smoky grey wings and a very dark brown abdomen. So three tails, two pairs of wings, same colour, dark smoky brown, smoky brown body, upland reservoirs, sepia dun. Right, the dun's left the water and moves into vegetation on the land and then the spinner hatches out. And this is the spinner that's hatched out from the dun. Again, characteristic three tails of claret and sepia dun. Wings in the spinner are completely translucent with just a faint greyish edge on the forewing at the tip. And the body is a little bit brighter, dark sepia brown with little paler bandings on each segment of the abdomen. So there's the spinner. That will mate over dry land and then the female will go back to lay her eggs. So sepia dun, sepia spinner, upland fly. A little word about imitating these. To imitate these, what you need is a very, very dark uh, fly. Uh, Lund's particular, perhaps, a dark imperial, something like that, that will Im imitate these quite nicely.